Marvel's fresh start is about to kick off in a big way, but let's break down what it means for comic book fans all over. What's up everybody, I'm Stan and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. This is going to be a one-shot that's about Marvel Fresh Start. So Marvel Fresh Start is the latest in a long line of retreads and relaunches and reboots and all kinds of whatever the hell you want to call it over at Marvel. From Marvel Now, Marvel Now 2.0, Marvel Legacy, and now Marvel Fresh Start. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this and go into it a little bit more in detail and what you can expect from Marvel Fresh Start coming up in the future. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to get more content like this and a little bit more insight into comic books. The first thing I want to talk about is what is is Marvel Legacy. Marvel Legacy is the last little reboot, relaunch, restart that we got from Marvel, and this is going to be the reintroduction of a lot of classic numbering schemes. So, books with a lot of history, like Amazing Spider-Man, Incredible Hulk, Invincible Iron Man, The Mighty Thor, these books got a lot of classic renumberings that brought them up into the 600s, 700s, and almost to 800 at this point in time. But, that is something that seems to be thrown out when it comes to Marvel Fresh Start. A lot of people are going to see brand new number ones, but what does it really mean? Well, Marvel has said that they're going to be keeping the legacy numbering, so if I was designing a Detail Comics logo like that, what I would probably do is say, put my Detail Comics up there, have my brand new number one, which is going to sell a lot of comic books, and then put my little legacy numbering down below. So say this is video number 384 on the Detail Comics channel, that's what's going to go right there. The big thing about this, though, is that Marvel Fresh Start is not necessarily going to be relaunching, rebooting, or resetting anything. It's all about the continuation of the stories that are already going on there, but also possibly cr announcing creative team changes that are going to bring you fresh ideas inside Marvel. It's not about creating new characters or restarting new characters. That is happening a little bit, but it's all about making sure that you get on the ground floor of what's going to be new and exciting at Marvel. To give you an idea, a few new series have already been announced and released, like Domino Number 1, Exiles Number 1, which has actually already gotten a second issue, The Hunt for Wolverine actually just came out, which is a one-shot that leads into a four-part miniseries, but we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. And then of course you have Infinity Countdown Prime with Adam Warlock, as well as the Infinity Countdown books themselves, which are really just a precursor for another book that we're going to talk about a little bit later in the video. It's all about making sure that you guys know that something brand new and fresh is coming from Marvel, and not necessarily discounting everything that happened inside. Marvel Legacy. Just paying homage to it and then creating a little bit more excitement for new creative teams that are telling new stories. Coming up on May 2nd, we actually have Avengers number one, which is going to be from Jason Aaron and Ed McGuinness, and this is going to be telling the story of Thor, Captain America, and Iron Man. Three of the original Avengers are going to be back on this team, restarting it from what has happened inside Avengers No Surrender, bringing things back to the ground floor in a bunch of different characters that really need the support of these other people. When you've got Hydra Cap, Coma Tony, and then of course the unworthy Thor, all all kind of team together when they used to be such pinnacles, icons of the Marvel Universe, it's really going to be interesting to see what Jason Aaron can do to bring this story to life. We also have Hunt for Wolverine Weapon Loss number one, which is going to be debuting on May 2nd, and that's going to be a part of those four, four-part miniseries that are going to tell the story of a bunch of different people hunting down Wolverine, trying to figure out where the hell he's gone. Then, jumping forth to May 9th, we actually have Hunt for Wolverine, the Adamantium Agenda, which is going to deal with a team of Tony Stark's Iron Man, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Spider-Man, and they're all going to be hunting down Wolverine, just like they did in New Avengers. Uh, but the big number one that's actually going to be dropping is Venom number one from Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman. Ryan Stegman being one of my favorite artists, and Donny Cates being one of the hottest writers inside Marvel's stable. So that's something that you're going to have to check out. Then, bouncing over to May 16th, we actually get Hunt for Wolverine, The Claws of a Killer, which is dealing with... Lady Deathstrike, Sabretooth, and it looks like Dokken, the son of Wolverine. This is going to be another one of those stories, another one of those four-part miniseries, but this is going to be a little bit more of a horror story than really everything else inside the lineup. And then to finish things off for that week, we're going to get Mighty Thor at the Gates of Valhalla, which is going to be a transitional piece between what we're going to be getting inside, or what we got inside Mighty Thor 706, and what we're going to be getting in the brand new Thor from Jason Aaron and Del Mundo, but we're going to get to that in a little bit. Then to cap off the month of May on the 23rd, you get Black Panther number one. So Black Panther number one continues to be written by ta Coates, but with a brand new art team and a brand new story direction. This is going to be dealing with Marvel Legacy number one's little plot thread that they dropped in there about the intergalactic empire of Wakanda. And this is the first thing that was teased actually way back at the end of Secret Wars when they sent their first space mission out into the cosmos. So Black Panther number one is going to be going in a really interesting direction, and it's one that a lot of fans have been excited for. And then we're going to get the last and 
installment of the Hunt for Wolverine saga, which is going to be Mystery and Madripoor, which was written by Jim Zub. And this is going to be dealing with a lot of Wolverine's exes, as well as Jubilee. They're going to be trying to track him down, and this really turns into a kind of a mystery dark romance storyline. And we're going to possibly get the reveal of Patch, you know, the old alternate Wolverine that used to be hanging out in Madripoor back when he had to have a secret identity. It's going to be kind of crazy, but it's just going to give you a little bit of flavor for what these Hunt for Wolverine books are going to be. Jumping into June, just before Ant-Man and the Wasp, the movie releases, we're going to get Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is going to be dealing with Scott Lang and Nadia Pym, and then we're going to get Ant-Man and the Wasp Living Legends, which is going to be dealing with Janet Van Dyne and Scott Lang. So these are going to be a few different kind of pieces that are really going to play the emphasis on the Ant-Man and Wasp characters, so that that way they get as much exposure as they possibly can before the movie comes out. Also, there's Dazzler X Song, which is going to be a one-shot, which is going to be dealing primarily with just Dazzler as a character. But that pales in comparison to the brand new series that are going to be coming out from Marvel. That's going to be Deadpool number one, which is going to be written by Scotty Young. And this is a completely different take on the Deadpool character after Jerry Dugan finishes his run with Deadpool number 300. Also, we have Doctor Strange number one, which is going to be written by Mark Wade, And this is going to take the good Doctor into space. Outside of some dimension hopping, Doctor Strange doesn't really make his way out into space that much, so it's going to be really interesting to see how this character adapts to that brand new environment. And then finally, the big book for me to begin in June, that is going to be The Immortal Hulk number one, written by Al Ewing. And this is going to be kind of like this dark, twisted horror story, which is going to be dealing with what the actual consequences of being the Hulk are. So while Bruce Banner might have the day, the Hulk is the one that comes out at night, and that is going to be scary for everybody, including Bruce himself. Heading over to June 13th, we get Deadpool Assassins number one, which is a six-part miniseries, and that's going to have actually art by Mark Bagley, which is going to be really interesting. Bagley being one of my favorite artists from Amazing Spider-Man and then of course Ultimate Spider-Man. He does a really good job with these kind of characters so I can't wait to see what he puts on the paper. However, the killer comic for June 13th is going to be Thor number one which is where we actually see the Odinson take his rightful place holding a, what could be a variety of hammers if this cover is anything to be believed. So the story of Jason Aaron's Thor is going to be continuing on everything that he started in God of Thunder and then all the way through Mighty Thor with Jane Foster and now into the future when it comes to Thor as he kind of regains that man is going to be a really interesting take. This is the home stretch for Jason Aaron, but if we're going to have any indication based on his previous runs, it's going to be a couple years before he steps off this book, and he's got plenty of story to tell. Then on June 20th, we get Tony Stark's Iron Man number one, written by Dan Slott, which is bringing this rejuvenated character fresh out of a coma back into his own little lifestyle, and it's going to be odd to see Dan Slott taking on this character since he's basically been writing a Tony Stark like Peter Parker for quite some time now in Amazing Spider-Man. But this is going to kind of give him a little bit more more opportunity to explore the depths of that character, or at least that's what I hope for. And then to finish out the month of June, we're going to be getting a mini-series, The Multiple Man, from Matthew Rosenberg, which is going to bring Jamie Madrox back to life after what happened in X-Men vs. Inhumans. Also, we get a brand new series from Jeff Lemire, and that is The Century Number 1. So after making his resurgence back in Doctor Strange, written by Donny Cates, The Century is getting his own title, and I can't wait to see what direction Jeff Lemire takes him in. The next big Wednesday on the schedule is July 4th, which means we get Captain America Number 1. So Ta-Nehisi Coates and Lanil Francis, you are going to be bringing this character to the pages, and I can't wait to see what kind of of structure is really going to be happening when it comes to Ta-Nehisi Coates taking on this kind of character. Not one person to shy away from political kind of agendas when it comes to their storytelling. It could be a book that a lot of people are really anticipating and it could be a lot of people are not necessarily waiting for something like this. They're not really happy with what this decision is going to be made, but I'm going to give this one a shot because I'm always in it for the interesting stories. If you can tell me an interesting story, I'm going to be buying Captain America. But I'm also going to be buying Cosmic Ghost Rider number one, which is going to be hitting store shelves with the popularity of Cosmic Ghost Rider inside the Thanos series that Donny Cates was writing, they couldn't help but create a small miniseries that's going to tell more of the tales of the Cosmic Ghost Rider. So this is just the fan demand bringing comic books to life, so if you want to continue to support something like that, make sure you buy them at your comic book shop. The other miniseries that's going to be running from Donny Cates is Death of Inhumans number one, which is going to be getting its kickoff. So while that might not necessarily be a literal death of all the Inhumans, it could be. We don't really know. The Inhumans haven't really been doing that well ever since the cancellation of their television show, which was really poorly executed, but the Inhumans themselves have a lot of potential as a character setup, and with Black Bolt being critically acclaimed by a lot of people and actually getting nominated for an Eisner, it's one of those things where if you can really execute on an Inhuman storyline, people are going to be able to enjoy it. So I hope Death of Inhumans burns them down just to build the Inhumans back up. After the big week of the 4th, we get July 11th, and that is Amazing Spider-Man number 1 making its debut with Nick Spencer and Ryan Otley as the creative team. This is an announcement, and this is a book that a lot of people have been waiting for ever since Dan Slott turned 
turned Otto Octavius into the superior Spider-Man. So the changeover in the different direction for the creative teams is one of the most highly anticipated things coming out of Marvel Fresh Start. The other book that's coming out that week is going to be X-23 number one, which is going to continue to tell the tales of Laura Kinney and Gabby, her small little cloned sister kind of person, and their pet Wolverine, Jonathan. So Tom Taylor did a really good job introducing these characters inside All New Wolverine, and Mariko Tamaki is going to be taking them over and then moving things forward. But I am a little bit lost on this one simply because I wish that Laura continued to gain that kind of respect and be called Wolverine instead of X-23. Then on July 18th, we're going to get the Life of Captain Marvel number one, which is promising to tell us the definitive origin story of Carol Danvers. So while we've already gotten a definitive origin story, and then we got another definitive origin story, and then we got our last definitive... Origin stories abound when it comes to Captain Marvel, but hopefully this is going to put the final nail in the coffin for this particular one, so that that way we can just continue to enjoy the character, or at least her redemption story after that absolute travesty that Brian Michael Bendis put her through inside Civil War number two. Character assassination abounded in that one, so let's see if she can actually regain that kind of confidence inside the Marvel Universe. And then finishing up July and everything we know about so far is Infinity Wars Prime number one, which is going to be the real kickoff point after Infinity Countdown, which is going to be a five-part miniseries with like four other miniseries and a lot of different stuff going on, just to count down to this Infinity Wars Prime, which is going to be more stuff that's going on. So there's a lot of stuff that's really going on with Infinity Stones. So check that out if you really like Infinity Stones. However, my really interesting title is going to be the X Classified book number one, which is going to be in the last week of July. So this, I think, is going to be Uncanny X-Men number one. We already know that Matthew Rosenberg is going to be taking over Astonishing X-Men. There's a lot of stuff that's going to be happening in X-Men Blue, and in about a minute we're going to be talking about another X event that's going to be coming up, so it could possibly be a correlation, but I'm not necessarily sure. My bet, Uncanny X-Men number one, bringing a lot of the team back together. Next, we can dive into August. So while August doesn't have any definitive dates for when these books are going to be published, we do know that one, Fantastic Four number one is going to be dropping out in August 2018, and that is written by Dan Slott with art by Sarah Pacelli. And this is super exciting. They're going really heavy on the trades, the true believers, the hardcovers, everything about Fantastic Four is coming out in July, which is a real push to create popularity and real anticipation for the Dan Slott run for Fantastic Four. Another new number one that we're going to get is Punisher number one. So Matthew Rosenberg is already writing the Punisher series, but they're going to kick that back off, renumber it at number one, get everybody kind of in a fever for it while he goes back to being a street level kind of vigilante anti-hero. So while he did go a little bit global when he got that war machine armor, they're going to bring this back into a small scale and then put him on the streets, but still targeting some big game. And then the other one that we know about is Extermination number one, which is going to be dealing with the OG X-Men. So we're talking about Time Displays, Jean Grey, Beast, all those young kids that are the original X-Men that got pulled forward in time, they're finally going to get their reckoning when we're kind of merging with their old timeline or all kinds of different stuff. Mark Brooks is doing the covers for this one and it already looks fantastic, but I can't wait to see what they do with these OG X-Men and how they kind of fold everything back into the timelines and make them work so that that way hopefully we just get to consolidate all the X-Men and instead of having 17 books we just got like three books that are really 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 good. I'm, I'm hoping that that can be the case. But all this leaves us with a few question marks. First, Miles Morales Spider-Man. What the fuck is going on with that guy? I mean, he lost his series when Spider-Man 240 came out and there's no real announcements when it comes to creative teams. They're gonna take him over and with a character that's got that kind of legacy that is moving forward, hopefully we're going to get a brand new Miles book. Otherwise, you're just stuck reading about him in Champions. Also, another book that just happens to be a Brian Michael Bendis creation is Jessica Jones. He said that there's already a successor picked out, but we have no formal announcements on this one. It's a book that with the popularity of the Netflix show, you can't help but want to have it on the stands. If you're Marvel and you want to publish these comics so that, that way people come in and they're familiar with the character. Jessica Jones is another book that you got to have on the shelves and we're probably not going to get an announcement between now and like August or something like that. And then the last thing that I think is going to happen but has no real indication and no real announcement so far is a Wolverine solo title. It could be a Wolverine title, it could be a Wolverine's book where you've got Laura matched up with Logan and that could be a real family affair and those things. But I'm just looking for more information on exactly what's going to happen when people find fucking Wolverine. I mean, we've got this entire 16 part mini series section that's going on just looking for the guy let's find him let's get him back in a book and let's make him do the shit that we know that he can do that's what I'm ready for when it comes to Wolverine but this is a breakdown of Fresh Start everything that we know so far and exactly what it means it's not necessarily a reboot it's not necessarily a refresh well it is a refresh it's a relaunch it is saying hey We've been telling good stories, but we want you to be excited about the stories that we're telling now because they're just as good, if not even better. So 
come grab our number ones. It still matters if you're talking about collecting and legacy, but Fresh Start is a way for you to get in on these books at the ground level without being intimidated and ready to rock and roll. But I want to know what you guys think about Fresh Start too, so hit me up in the comments down below and we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.